Hey guys, it's Lynn. How are you doing? As you've seen from the title, I'm going to talk about my impressions on the movie To The Bone, a Netflix movie. It just came out recently and it's a film about uh, eating disorders and it's brought in quite a lot of controversy. So I thought that was a good opportunity to talk on the matter and the subject and also talk about my relationship to food, my journey, my experience experience on the subject. So first of all, a few disclaimers. I'm not an expert. I don't claim to know fully about eating disorders. This video may be triggering to people who are struggling with an eating disorder. So please take any necessary measure if you're going to watch this video, if you're going through something do what you need to do, this is my disclaimer. Also, spoiler alert, I'm reviewing a film. So if you haven't seen the film yet, I suggest that you go check it out before watching this video. So I'm going to explain my relationship to food to you guys and it's something I haven't talked about with many people, only a handful of people in my entire life. So I might not be using the right words, the right, the right vocab, so not, any, not everybody get mad at me, I'm going to try my best and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. So I wouldn't say that I've struggled with a full-blown eating disorder. I don't feel like I have an eating disorder or rather I don't want to admit that I may have an eating disorder because that way whatever is going on with me is dormant and I keep my control over it. I, I have the upper hand. But I do know that I have something in here that is making me think things that are not true and is making me see things that are not the way they truly are. What typically happens is that something inside me tells me that I need to lose weight or I need to work out, that I need to eat these types of food and not that one and it wants me to be healthy, so not too fat, not too thin, right in between, but my body needs to be toned and my skin needs to look healthy and my brain needs to be super balanced so it can be super performant during the day. And even though I know I'm on the thinner side, when I look at myself in the mirror, I will poke and prod myself and see what needs to be changed and made better. I'll see myself bigger than I actually am. Again, under control. I just know that it's there in the back of my mind, this constant need to be the perfect version of myself constantly. So when it comes to behaviors and patterns of an eating disorder, I've never ever purged in my entire life. I was blessed with the fear of vomit and as I've mentioned this obsession of being healthy and perfect obviously stops me from harming myself. Throwing up can damage your teeth and we want to have good teeth and I don't want to have a damaged esophagus and have stomach problems. I know, it's very contradictory. When it comes to restricting, that's a different story because I feel that if you look at my case from an outsider's point of view, it will seem like I'm restricting and obviously if it is an eating disorder that I have, all these excuses that I've made up for myself will seem pointless, but I do watch what I eat. I don't eat any carbs in the evening. I'm careful with junk food and sugar. I watch what I eat and it's a good thing, but I know that it's something that I need to be careful with so I don't go into an extreme with it. And also, I don't eat in the evening. It has been the case for a few months now and I have lost some weight from it. The excuses I gave myself was not eating in the evenings, first of all, were because I could not and can still not really afford to eat three meals a day. So I thought, you know, you don't really have to eat in the evening, so I'm just not going to. And also I sleep better when I don't eat. If I do want to eat in the evenings, I'll eat something light like a salad. So I'll munch on some carrots or have a soup, but I'll have to be done eating by, I'd say, 7 p.m. So this might count as restricting, I'm not sure. Uh, so my relationship to food has changed drastically throughout the years and I think the starting point to the whole this whole thing was when my parents got divorced and I had to go live with my dad every other week with my brother and that was something completely new. As with a lot of eating disorders, 
it's about losing control so i think that's where it could have started and then it just went from bad to worse living with my dad was not a good experience at first he himself was a very controlling person and he always thought that i was too thin now i was about nine or ten at the time and i had just gone through a growth spurt and i had shut up vertically i had no boobs no hips i was just like stretched out and i was I did look very thin, but I was 10. I had no clue what an eating disorder was. I was a healthy kid. My dad got it into his head that I was anorexic. And so he started overfeeding me or us. My, he overfed the both of us, me and my brother. And the portions were unbelievable. I mean, we were eating out of salad bowls, huge portions of food, and I was constantly being watched. I had to finish everything. And I, even after that, I was watched if I had to go to the bathroom or everything. So a huge pressure when it came with food. So with the, the pressure, with the stress from the divorce and the pressure to eat those humongous quantities of food my relationship to food was not good anymore and because i was forcing myself to eat i was never looking forward to eat and that just created a snowball effect where i was struggling to eat and not eating made it worse with my dad and you know it went really bad and in the end i just forced myself to eat and it didn't change throughout many many years of living with my dad and luckily it was every other week so when i went back to my mom it was kind of normal but i forced myself to eat for the longest time and sometimes i did hide food because i just couldn't eat and i did not want to risk a shitstorm with my dad but it was years of forcing myself and it wasn't even healthy food most of the time it was processed food and you know very rich food and high calorie food so inevitably once i reached puberty I gained a shit ton of weight and that was very scary for me because at first I didn't notice I mean puberty the body goes through a lot of changes but once I reached 16 I was pretty chubby and as a tall girl you don't notice it right away but my arms were big my, my cheeks were very round my boobs felt really big compared to what I have now anyway my ass was big I had love handles and I was not feeling good in my body at all and for an insecure teenager it was not a good time in my life and that's where I feel like I had lost complete control over my own body and it was very distressing I couldn't choose the amount that I ate and I couldn't choose what I was putting in my body and I couldn't stop my body from getting bigger and bigger and it was a very scary thing and that lasted until I went off to art school and I got the control back and I've never relinquished it since then hence the willpower to stay like a perfect weight and work out and eat healthy and eat what I want when I want but without getting fat because this fear of gaining weight without my authorization again is so frightening to me this is what probably triggered this whole thing this is my backstory and my relationship to food and weight and how it has been for me i just want to put this into perspective with what the characters from the film to the bone have gone through obviously i have not gone through rehab centers and hostels and I've never been hospitalized, I've never had it this bad but I want to give you a backstory just because I want to give a, my point of view on the film and I feel like my point of view doesn't make sense unless I tell you my backstory now the film in itself for me at least was extremely triggering and I had a feeling it was going to be triggering so before I watched the movie I ate a big meal and I even prepared a meal for myself for the next day if you are in recovery like in the process of recovering i wouldn't recommend this movie i honestly would not recommend it uh if you're over that hill or not in the whole process thing that's okay but i personally would not recommend watching it if you're easily triggered so to the bone is the story of a young girl ellen who suffers from anorexia nervosa and has gone through multiple treatment facilities and is just resisting treatment. I saw myself a lot of times in her behavior which was 
scary things the poking the prodding the looking at her body being slightly pleased when she was on the scale and seeing that it was just going lower and lower and measuring herself she measures her arms with her fingers i used to do that with my uh, thighs and my my th my fingers i find that the film in itself for me, that's is my is my point of view. I I find that if you don't know anything at all about eating disorders, about the whole psychological and mental aspect of them, I feel like it's not well explained enough for someone who does not know a single thing. And in that sense, I was a little disappointed because I always look for ways to explain what's going on in my head and. I enjoy when movies can do that for me and in that sense I I was a little disappointed. I would have liked a, a, a way to understand it more, just to maybe be more inside the character's head instead of just seeing the behaviors and the actions and all the little things that the character did that does is symptomatic of an eating disorder but I would have liked something more about what goes on in here, my point of view again. I didn't I did however enjoy seeing different types of people with different types of eating disorders, different levels, different backgrounds. I would have enjoyed seeing more again of the backstories of the different characters. That might just be me. Uh, also one the main thing, the very main thing that I was very annoyed about and it does sound like I'm dissing my movie but not at all. I'm just giving my point of view with what I've been through uh, in relation to this movie um, is that I would have loved, 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 loved seeing Ellen's full recovery. I know it might not have added anything to the movie, but for me and maybe for people who are recovering from an eating disorder, I would have loved to see that. So, yes you do assume that from that point where she got like the the things that switched in her head you do assume that she's going to get better but i wanted to see her enjoy food i wanted to see her with a full head of luscious hair rosy cheeks perf like glowing healthy skin sparkling eyes you know i, I want i really really wanted to see that and as I mentioned might not have been necessary to the storyline but I needed to see that so yes I hope I didn't ramble on for too long I know I tend to do that so I try to get as to the point as possible I hope I didn't skim over too many things I did my very best it's not an easy subject to approach a lot of a lot a lot of people in my own personal circle do not know what I've gone through so this is kind of a coming out video I don't know might be awkward. It's something that I can talk openly about and I hope I'm not being too honest or oversharing or being too abrupt but this is what I went through and this is my opinion from this film that just came out that sparked so much controversy. I've given my point of view and that's that's that. So hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless. Uh, I'd be very curious to know what you thought of the film if you've seen it, so leave it in the comments below. So if you want to see more of my videos and keep updated with me, the subscribe button is right down there next to the bell button if you want to be the very first to be notified when a new video comes up. And then next to that again is the thumb up button. So that's the way to tell me that you liked and enjoyed my video. So be sure to click on that. Okay guys, I'll word you all and I'll see you all very soon in my next video. Bye.